working. There's no problem too big or small, no issue too hot or cold, and no subject these gentlemen won't talk about. Let's head into the lab to see what they're working to figure out today. Let's get into it and get down to it. Welcome to Figure It Out. This is George Grumbacher. Joining me as always is Centauri Minor. Hello, folks. Helping us move from awareness to action today is the Honorable Michelle Reagan, Secretary of State of the great state of Arizona. Welcome, Michelle. Thank you. Centauri, do you know what is on the state seal of Arizona? <laughs> I do not. I feel bad saying that as in Arizonan and native Phoenician, but I have no idea. Okay. You have no idea, huh? I have no idea. I feel so bad. I feel so ill-prepared. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> well, it's exactly where it is right now because she, as Secretary of the State, is keeper of the seal. So, so it's where a big is it? Job, but somebody's got to do it, right? <laughs> <laughs> where is the um, state seal right now, Michelle? Well, the um, official state seal is actually the old one is actually kept in a vault. But I am in charge of one of the probably more fun parts of my job or easy parts is I'm in charge of giving permission to people who wish to print or use the seal. Ah, so yeah. people have to contact us, and their printer needs to get permission. So who does that? The Secretary of State in Arizona. Got what it. type of groups are looking to use the seal? Oh, it could be just about anybody. We've gotten strange requests where somebody wanted to have a pair of cowboy boots made. Um, <laughs> the governor's plane, when the governor's, uh, you know, when they get a plane and it needs to have the state seal and it needs to have the state seal on it. Um, you can't use the seal of a state without getting permission. So there's um, business cards when people have their business cards printed. I mean, there's just like, 101 uses for a seal. Well, then. Got it. So when the governor yeah. asked for permission to use it, did you him and ha or did you go ahead and say yes right away? Ah, uh, you know, we gave him permission right away. <laughs> Fair enough. Yes, and it was actually, it wasn't actually him who called. It was um, Department of Public Safety because they were, when the planes came in, um, they were like, ooh, we've got to get these things decorated up. Got it. So, Excellent. Yeah, little, little fun fact. Probably, like I said, the more, one of the more fun things that I do. Yeah, well, perfect. So in the state of Arizona, the Secretary of State is the second highest elected office that we have. We do not have a lieutenant governor, so Michelle is in line for the governorship I learned happen. So that was something that I learned today during a little bit of research. So Yes, yeah, so we don't have a lieutenant governor, so um, we're one of only three states that doesn't have a lieutenant governor, so I am the um, de facto lieutenant governor of Arizona, and every time Governor Ducey leaves the state, I am what's called acting governor. So it doesn't mean I run up to his office and make a bunch of decisions. It um, <laughs> just means that um, that is it's basically a lot more papers to sign if you really want to know the truth. Um, right. <laughs> so the real, the real meat of what we do is at the Secretary of State's office is business services and elections, and state libraries. Got it. And you are now running for or campaigning for your second term, having been elected uh, for your first term. And if you were to win, this would be your last opportunity to be Secretary of State. I, I'm just curious. I, I'm just curious if you would tell us a little bit about your career path leading up to being Secretary of State. Oh yeah, absolutely. I I served in the House and in the Senate. Um, but before that, I had a real life, and I um, worked with my family. We had a um, sign shop in downtown Phoenix. We made signs, posters, banners, big signs, little signs, on the sides of buildings all the way down to name tags. So um, that's what we did, and that was actually why I first ran for office, because I just wanted small businesses to have a voice at the Capitol. Um, you know, I never expected to be down there this long, but... I get to do a lot of stuff for small businesses in the Secretary of State's office. Excellent. And knowing what you know now, obviously you would do it over again because you're running for Secretary of State again. But what are some of the the 
the, the biggest surprises the, um, that you've encountered so far? Um, definitely a big surprise is just, and I think a lot of people are facing this right now, it's just the, um, the animosity in the world that, uh, mm. that we live in. <laughs> um, it's, it's rough and tumble out there. And so um, people are not friendly like they used to be when I first started. I mean, there's still always friendly people, but overall, people aren't as friendly as when I first started. And that's hard. Hmm. That's very hard to, to deal with. And how... And I mean, have you noticed the environment changing? Uh, are sure. people, um, you know, they're a little more... Um, just uh, everything where, you know, you just have to be extra double careful that you're not offending somebody even when you, you say something that perhaps you don't mean offense at all. You just have to, it's just a much more sensitive world that we live in now. And, um, and on top of that, people have the ability to tell you whatever they want on social media instantaneously. So that's, you know, that just has changed, I think, the, the civil discourse in our entire world, actually. Michelle, can you uh, talk a little bit about, I was, uh, you keyed up a great question, which is in the very rapid fire social media driven world where everyone has an opinion, everything's public and everything you do is scrutinized. Talk to us about how that's in your role is you've seen that change in the work that you can do, how effective you can be and how that's kind of put you on your guard on some of the work and policies you're trying to get through. Well, you certainly can be um, effective. This, this, you know, that your your productivity doesn't change as much. What changes is, um, like I said, the, the the civil discourse. And so, when I first started in the house, trying first started in the house, it was very very common for me to be um, have friends and and go out with on a social level. It didn't matter what party they were. Um, so Republicans, Democrats, everyone used to hang together. You would go to the floor of the House and disagree vehemently on an issue. But at the end of the day, we were all just people, and we were all just trying to do what we thought was best. So it wasn't as personal. And I think what social media has done is it's made things so much more personal, um, where somebody can tell you in the middle of the night exactly what they think of you, um, and, you know, and, you, and you get it instantly. And my biggest fear is what you're going to is, is what, and we're already starting to see it is that sometimes really good people who are what I call real people, which is what I was when I first ran for office. I'd never studied it. I'd never been in public service. I'd never, you know, I didn't go to um, the sin government. It's a small business owner. And what you're going to see is the amount of people who are going to be willing to step up into some of these roles. It's decreasing because people are saying, why would I put up with that? <laughs> you know, and, and, and that's sad because our government is supposed to be a citizen government, meaning it's supposed to call its people from the citizenry. And so that's, that's very um, disheartening when you see good people that there's no way in a million years they would run and put their name out there because it's just gotten so angry. Well, you're, uh, Michelle, it's interesting because you're doing it again. Is it because you have now tougher, thicker skin, and you can you can handle it? Oh, yes. I mean, knowing what I know now, had I known that, I would have never gotten into this. <laughs> so it was, it was being kind of naive, and also, you know, when I first started and was first elected, we didn't even have text messaging. So, I mean, the world was a lot different. Now, um, you know, I don't, I don't see where people would say, you know, no way, I'm not going to, anything, you know, if you, gosh forbid, say something wrong or do something wrong, that could affect your business. It could affect your livelihood. Um, you know, it's just not something a lot of people are going to want to, uh, they're going to think twice before deciding to do that. And that's, I, I find that sad because we miss out on a lot of good talent. Yeah, you would be probably foolish to not have to be cognizant and probably wary of the immense scrutiny. I don't even know if that's the correct term, but at the potential whim or staring down the barrel of this outrage machine, which is constantly looking for the next victim to chew up and spit out. Right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and the good news is if you do get chosen as one of those um, people that they're going to chew up and spit out, it's probably going to be short-lived because they're going to go on to somebody else next. And that's just how sad and kind of obnoxious this has gotten. Of, 
obnoxious this has gotten. So, I mean, we're all looking to just be angry. <laughs> right. And that's, and that's kind of strange. It wasn't, it wasn't always like that. People just need to take deeper breaths, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Are you looking to God's ears? Perhaps. <laughs> Everybody settle down. Well, Michelle, I, I, I sort of what I got out of order here with, with, with my questions, but it's also possible that we just answered one of them. So one of the questions we like to start with with everybody is, what are the top three things that you've learned over the past three years? But we can certainly expand that to, to four yeah, years or no, short um, two. Well, I've learned a lot about Arizona because I travel the state now, So, and we've got a pretty big state. So it's not like, you know, it's not like we're Delaware. We're, we're very large in um, land. And so traveling around the state, because I am a statewide officer, is awesome because everybody in all different parts of the state, very, very eye-opening. And it's quite tr- frankly something I would never want to take back now that I've gotten to, to know all these little nooks and corners of our amazing state. Um, that's a, just an honor and a privilege to get to know those things. And then I've had to um, learn an awful lot on cybersecurity which is something that I wasn't, um, and I don't really think anybody was really prepared for the amount of, or how open we were going to open ourselves up to people trying to get information from us. So, you know, to to get a call and and say that your, you know, website is, or your your, um, voting systems that that keep all the voters' information in it, you know, that people are trying to get into that, and a call from the FBI saying, you know, we monitor the dark web and we see some things that are concerning. That's not a, something I was prepared for at all. And, um, you know, I was prepared for it all. And, um, you know, that was a very big eye-opening experience. So I think that was, that would be probably the top of things that were, that I learned. <laughs> Got it. Nice. So it's interesting that, would you say that it's fair to say that in your interpersonal communications with people that when, when, when you're traveling around, those are more kind or congenial? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. The further, um, especially when you're going around, uh, I, I call it rural Arizona, although some areas aren't so rural anymore. But um, when you have, get a chance to sit and talk to people one-on-one or in person, and it's not all electronic communication, I think obviously the way people treat each other is going to be a lot different, um, and it's it's just a lot more enjoyable. Because you know, I always say it's hard to hate up close. Mm-hmm. We, we can all think these things about each other, but once you meet somebody, um, you can tell right away whether you're going to like that person or or, or disagree with that person. It's just I, I think we're we're losing that skill a little bit. So I enjoy traveling around and, and meeting people face to face. Very retail politics, so um, it's a good thing I like it because we do it an awful lot. Oh, I believe it, and I'm 100 percent sure that that people, whether they're in Phoenix or they're in a a more um, outlined community, very much appreciate you taking the time to, to visit with them as well. So I'm sure that that's reciprocal. Well, yeah, they, of course they get um, they get very excited when somebody comes from you know the Phoenix area to care about what they're doing or how their schools are or um, what is happening with, you know, every every county in Arizona uses different election equipment. Hmm. So, you know, just even kind of how do you, how do you, how do people vote in your community? That's, that's a pretty big, um, pretty big thing that the Secretary of State's concerned with. So, Michelle, you've talked about it a, a bit, but if you could, uh, that's a little civics lesson for all of our listeners. If you could really drill down into the core function of your, of your role, what would it be? Well, the core function of um, the Secretary of State's office in Arizona, and it's different in every state, so not every Secretary of State's office has the same divisions under it, but I'm in charge of the state library system. I'm in charge of um, voting systems, the overall elections um, of the state, and then I'm in charge of business services filing. So anytime businesses are filing trademarks or trade names or partnerships, that's all going through the Secretary of State's office. In some states, they're in charge of um, tourism. That is not in Arizona. In some states, they're in charge of uh, DMV or MVD. And that, and- that um, 
isn't part of the duties here. Instead, I have um, libraries, archives, public records. Those are huge divisions uh, full of people who are basically the record keepers of the state. Got it. So what would you say that have been the greatest successes of your your first term, and what would your opponents say have been your biggest shortcomings? Well, my biggest successes have been taking an office that was largely paper-based and making it so however you wanted to interact with us, you're able to do that. So we still like it when people come to, to visit us in the office and bring paper, but they should also have the ability to, to file things online. And so we, in three short years, took it from an office that didn't even accept credit cards to an office where you can do almost everything on your cell phone now. So that is, you know, whether you're a lobbyist, whether you're a candidate, whether you're a business trying to file any of those people, go, you're trying to get a book out of our law library, all of that now can be done on your mobile phone. It was a huge undertaking. Um, it was a risk. And the reason why, you know, but that's, I think, one of the reasons why you don't see people go into sometimes public offices and make big changes, because it's very risky. Um, you're giving anybody who wants to run against you a lot of, a lot of ammunition. So um, it, cause it doesn't always go right the first time. Mm-hmm. And, but th- it's worth it in the end. But that would, so I, if I was an opponent of me, I would point to the times that some of those programs didn't work first thing off, you know, off the bat. Um, and, you know, then I, I counter back and say, well, that's the price of progress. So, mm-hmm. so we're still immensely proud that we stuck our neck out and did these things because we are leaving this office a lot more functional than when we found it. Excellent. And so in charge of, I mean, what a massive undertaking, moving from not even being able to accept credit cards. Huge to, undertaking. To, uh, <laughs> and the sensitivity of all the information and everything else that, 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 that you're dealing with. So that's, that's certainly enormous. I'm, I'm curious, we had the opportunity to have Adrian Fontes on the podcast a couple of weeks back, and he's obviously in charge of, of the Maricopa County elections. How do you interface with his office? Well, the way that elections work in Arizona is there's 15 counties, and each county has a county recorder. And so Adrian is the county recorder of Maricopa County. So he's kind of the elections boss for Maricopa County. And I oversee statewide elections. So what, how is that different? Well, sometimes it overlaps with counties and sometimes it doesn't. So um, we have to work with all 15 county recorders. And it's a very, very interesting be- just because, as I mentioned, not everyone's on the same systems, the same software, the same programs. So they don't do things the same way. It's because each county recorder is basically the boss of that county. Hmm. So um, that's It's interesting. Sometimes, you know, we are completely in sync, and sometimes we're going to vehemently disagree because at the end of the day, um, they still have to follow state laws. So it's a a fun relationship. Um, You know, our 15 county recorders are great, so we're we're pretty lucky. They do the real heavy lifting for elections. Yeah, certainly that's another hot button uh, as of late is making sure that the elections are secure and safe and and done done fairly and, and correctly so um yeah so and, and you know and, and elections are run by human beings so they're not always going to mm, go perfect right but um you know i know adrian and his team try to minimize minimize the uh you know the people who are um you know disenfranchised the big to the most that they can they keep it to the minimum mm-hmm. they do a really good job of that Michelle, can you tell us, and it's already put you on the spot, how many registered voters voters do we have in the state of Arizona? I can tell you roughly we have, um, well, our population just went over so it's close to 7.5 million, and roughly 50% of those are registered to vote. Is that so pretty that, in know, line with say others? About 3 million. Is that comparable to other states, the, the, the percentage? It's comparable to other states, yes. Um, what... What is always interesting is turnout, because just because someone's registered doesn't actually mean they're going to show up and vote or, um, you know, cast their ballot when it gets sent to them in the mail. So that's something that we watch. Um, You know, having registered, a lot of registered voters is great. Let's make sure they get to the polls. (laughs) So we're always working on that. Got it. And every election is different. Some elections have great turnout, presidential, um, presidential um, elections, 
especially. And some, you know, turnout hovers around uh, 50, 50, 60 percent. Perfect. So what, what, are the, what are the squeaky wheels that your office is hearing pretty consistently? And what do you intend to, to work on should you be elected again? Um, the squeaky wheels are, and they're very legitimate, and that is, is my vote safe? Can my vote be hacked? Um, you know, when we hear words from the media about Russians and hacking and voting, uh, those aren't good words to all have in the same sentence. And so what we like to always remind people is that your vote, your actual vote, cannot be hacked. Um, and it takes a lot of reminding for people to reassure them of that, because the vote itself is not online, and the machines that, that tabulate the votes are not hooked up to the Internet Are to hack. It's an awareness uh, campaign constantly to remind people of that so that they're not afraid and so that they know that their vote is really important and we want them to exercise their their right to, to vote. So um, probably I would say that by far is, hmm. is probably one of the biggest challenges. Thank you. And what would be on the uh, – what would be your top – the top things on your agenda for your second term? Well, we want to finish some of the projects that we've started, uh, especially some of these IT projects aren't ones that are done in one year or two years. They're multi-year projects. So getting the lobbyist um, database so that people can easily look up and see lo who lobbyists are giving to, um, we want to get that all online. And then we've also started this um, new computer program called See the Money, and see the money is the money, and see the money is one of those programs that will never be done because it's so powerful that it can do things that right now state law says that we can't even do. So this is a way for a person to look up a politician and see exactly who's giving them money. Um, so you can look me up on seethemoney.com, and a window's going to open, and everyone who's contributed to me will be listed. Oh, wow. Yeah, so we're the first um, state in the country to build something like this. And what we want to do is now add in all levels of, of politicians, so not just statewide and legislative. We want to add in the city councils. And, um, you know, basically if you're running for office for a dog catcher, you should be in this system. And that's going to take probably two years to onboard everybody. So I, I really want to see that through because – I actually came up with that and sketched this program out on a cocktail napkin about three years ago. So it's, so, it's kind of my baby. <laughs> Are you having um, – I would imagine there's some pushback to that, though. Or does everyone love the transparency? Well, it's 50-50. Some people love the transparency. Some people say it's not enough information. And then some people say it's too much information. Um, the end of the day, it's just one of those things, what's the right thing to do? And all of this information that's in there was already public information. So none of it is new that was not required before. So we're required as politicians to file all this stuff, except, again, it was a lot of it was being filed on paper. So it's already deemed public record, and anyone should have access to it any, at any time. But why do we need to make them drive to the Capitol and pay 15 cents a copy to get it? Right. Well, Michelle, the words, because it's the right thing to do, do not seem to come out of national politics enough these days. So, <laughs> so I well, appreciate and that. that would be a really hard job, but uh, yeah. you know, anger with you no matter what you do. So you just kind of, you can't let that be the what determines your next course of action. Oh, well, this person might get mad. Well, people get mad all the time. That's just the nature of the world we're living in. So we, That's right. I always like to fall back on. Is it, you know, is it the best thing for our state to do this? Yes or no? It's, it's pretty easy then. I appreciate that very much. So, Michelle, the, the, the last thing that we wanted to know is, knowing that the whole world would hear you, what plea would you make? <laughs> to be kind to one another. And I know that's hard because we live in such a rough and tumble world and it's... Um, a lot of animosity and a lot of anger and a lot of fear. But at the end of the day, we all want the same things for our state. I mean, no one's going to say they want bad air and bad schools and a crappy, a crappy economy. 
everybody wants the same thing. So we're going to get there a lot easier if we start being polite to each other and start working together. I think that that is wonderful. Thank you so much for that. Um, awesome. We want to be respectful of your time. Michelle, where can people learn more about you and your campaign? Well, for campaign stuff, the best website is votereagan.com. So vote and then Reagan, just like the other guy who is a lot more famous <laughs> than me, um, dot com. And then for our Secretary of State website, um, which is where you can find out a host of information on what, what we do and how we can help you, that is um, the best website to go to is Arizona.com. Vote. Arizona dot vote. Excellent. Centauri, what have we Award winning oh, website. Award winning. <laughs> I love it. Centauri, what have we forgotten to talk about? Answer all of my questions. Thank you, Michelle, for being on. Struggle is for being on. No, no problem. Thank you so much for thinking of me. Yeah, we definitely appreciate it, Michelle. And best of luck to you. Definitely encourage everybody to go check out those websites, which will be listed in the notes of the show. And as yep. always. Easy to remember. Yes. <laughs> 